in, uh, in the 60s, Michael Moorcock wrote a series of stories and novels concerning this one character, Jerry Cornelius. And then he, he gave the character away. And a bunch of people from the New World also wrote a story concerning Jerry Cornelius. This is my Jerry Cornelius story. It's called J.C. Rules, OK. One, Jerry Cornelius stood at the back of the hall watching the dancers, relying the shaven heads and bare chests of the participants. The formality of the thrash was that of the minuet. Two, the CIA had planned the coup for noon, six hours from now. It was Jerry's job to stop it. The small Central American Republic must maintain its independence since it was the last of its kind. Jerry transferred his M16 to his left hand and wiped his brow. The flies were impossible. Three, no government, no family, no religion. Four, all over Europe, revolutions were occurring. Kings and queens were being disposed. Anarchist republics were being created. Jerry adjusted his lace cuff. The vast expanse of his black frock coat was broken only by a tiny red lapel pin. His sword hung ready at his side. Suddenly he heard a noise. Five, from each according to their ability to each according to their need. Six, the trek through the jungle had been exhausted, but Jerry was finally on the outskirts of the capital. A slight drizzle while driving away the flies had also soaked him to the skin. He consulted his map to get his bearings. Seven, Jerry good-naturedly good pushed his way to the stage. In the meantime, the band had turned on their amps and plugged in their instruments. Getting a friendly hand from those in front, Jerry lifted himself up. He grabbed the mic and shouted, one, two, three, four. Eight. Full moon moving out from the clouds, white cat walks in the garden. One year later, he returned home, black cat in the snow. Nine. Music is a beat, and without the beat, there is no life. The singer is a mirror of the audience. 10, never apologize, never explain. 11, with only a few minutes remaining, he quickly opened the knapsack. <coughs> Taking the large lump of plastic, he dragged it into the joint at the base of the tower. Let them try to commandeer the radio with no transmitter, Jerry thought. 12, his boots ran out loudly as he ran wildly down the metal corridor. Drawing his vibra gun, Jerry Lane aimed it at the airlock and pressed the trigger. The plastic panel had shattered and the air rushed out of the ship. <coughs> Jerry held his breath and jumped into space. 13. Still holding the microphone, Jerry dived off the low stage. The rest of the band followed, their instruments raised like standards. The crowd surged into the street. It had finally begun. This is about Michigan. It's called An Unwanted Visitor. There's a hippo in our bathtub, a small one. It fell trying to climb from the roof of the empty carport to a tree. Earlier, it had seen squirrels and even the cat attempt the feet and succeed. Now it's crippled. Carol spends most of the morning, morning covering it with mud made from dirt from her garden. In the afternoon, when she's at work in the parking lot, I take over. Since the only dirt I have is from the stepping stone path I made last week, the hippo isn't very satisfied. At night, we are all exhausted. Even the cat can go to bed early. Hopefully, the animal will recover before the summer heat arrives. This is uh, untitled poem. I had a dream last night. I became Charles Bukowski. 
No, not the way you think. My hand shook just like his. 